Welcome back. One year ago today, the U.S.-backed Iraqi army launched their offensive on the northern Iraqi city of Mosul, formerly a stronghold for ISIS-Daesh. Aside millions killed, wounded, or displaced by NATO wars in the Middle East, the so-called liberation of Mosul has reportedly left nine out of ten major hospitals destroyed. Most residential areas have been demolished and more than 40,000 civilians apparently killed. Our next guest has seen the devastation in Mosul firsthand. Mohammed al Daraji's new film, The Journey, though, humanizes a phrase thrown around in the mainstream media as it looks into the root causes and the reality of suicide bombing. It's just been showcased at this year's London BFI Film Festival. Mohammed, thanks so much for uh, coming on. You know the phrase, I know the phrase, viewers will know the phrase. It's a suicide bomber as if, uh, as if to dismiss it. Yeah. Um, why did you? Choose uh, to make a film to transform our understanding of that phrase. To be honest with you, I didn't choose it. You know, usually the story chose me to to, to come to this. Um, I was in, Bag in Baghdad in 2008, preparing for my second feature film, Son of Babylon, and I opened the newspaper and I see this article and with the picture about 17 years old female, her clothes being taken off. And there is a policeman, Iraqi policeman, tried to help her to uh, take the vest of the suicide bomber off her. And the story is about this girl, five minutes before the bomb go off, she come to him and she say, she's supposed to bomb the, the police station. She come to the police people saying, I have only five minutes left, help me to get the bomb off from me. And that story shocked me. I never thought about a female to be a suicide bomber. Never thought about a female to be a bomb. You know, and then I start to think about it. And then I make, I make my research and I find out until 2010 was more than 250 female suicide bomber. I didn't get it. I didn't get as Mohammed al Daraji Iraqi because I never thought about a female, a woman like my mother, my sister, you know, could be my girlfriend, uh, to, be, uh, to be a suicide bomber, you know. And, and then I wrote my first and second draft, and to be honest with you, it was against them. Because I hate them, because they destroyed my country, my nation, my people, my friend, my mom. I lost family members because of the suicide bomber. And then and one day I met this uh, female uh, girl. I went to the Iraqi um, uh, prison for terrorism that has been captured by the Iraqi army, the Iraqi police. And I met this girl, and she was beautiful, astonishing girl, 20 years old, you know, very smart, very clever. And she was talking with me and talking with me. And I looked at her and she's a human being, you know? And I felt, wait a minute, I'm doing a film about a suicide mama, but I'm not having given them anything. So I start to look to the subject in a different way. And because, you know, since 2001, since September 11, and you hear this big title for about war against terrorism, war against extremism, and then this title has changed now, again, Islam, extremism in Islam, you know, and where we are now, 2017, and look to us, everywhere, in London, in Baghdad, in Syria. <laughs> This film humanizes uh, ordinary Iraqis yeah. at Baghdad railway station. The children, yeah. tell me about the children in the film because uh, they look like they could be homeless children in a British uh, station under austerity Britain. We are going through a difficult time, but we are a beautiful human being. We, ha we have normal life and we have a normal activity and, and, and we have normal joy and we are looking for to, to have a joy in life. You know, those children. You know, I always make film about women and children because they are the victim of the war. They are the, the victim of the occupation. They are the, the victim of ISIS. They are the victim of the corruption in government and all of that. Liberated by Britain and America is how we learn of No, no, Iraq no we don't call it liberated. Britain. They are occupied no, for so we know the 2003 war is occupation. You know, it's like we don't call it liberation or anything. I don't call it liberation. I made films not about liberation because the country is destroyed. <laughs> I've got to ask, of course, I mean, now, 
believe in Eminem uh, in demonizing Trump is saying the U.S. military has something to support. Yeah. Uh, you chose to uh, portray the U.S. military in Baghdad as um, ignorant uh, and clearly out of their depth, let alone cruel. Why? In, in a way, you know, the soldiers that I have it on the film, it pay, I base them in the real character that I met personal as Muhammad. With my first feature film, Ahlam, in 2004, I was arrested by the American, put in the prison for seven days, uh, accusing that I'm doing propaganda film for Al Qaeda. The American, the American army, yeah. And then, and then uh, that was a guy called Michael. Well, that you were with Al Qaeda, the American military thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I was arrested with my uh, another three crew member, the makeup, the sound guy, and all of that, accusing that we are doing um, uh, Al Qaeda propaganda film. That was in 17th of December 2004. And um, well, they were putting us in the prison, the green zone area. And I had this guy, Michael, he's the guard in the prison. He's checking us, you know, they took your clothes off and, you know, he humiliated you in a way. And that was 17th of December. And I, 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 they put me in the prison and, you know, they took all your clothes off. And then this guy, he's, uh, um, uh, he's checking me and then he speaks with his colleague. And I had a very good shoes, you know, I bought from Amsterdam. And he's saying, I'm not going to swear, but he's saying he's swearing, you know. He said, look to this mother, uh, he have expensive shoes. He stole it from somewhere. And I looked at him, I am naked, you know, and I said to him, I didn't stole it, I bought it from Amsterdam. And this soldier, he's tough, rough, harsh. But then he become my friend. He speak with me English. He, he smuggled for me cigarettes sometime, you know. He smuggled for me chicken soup. And he become a human being by the end. So in the film, you see him he's arrogant, you know, tough, rough, harsh. You know, he said, "Don't touch women." He touch women, you know. Brutalizing. Brutalizing, you know. And and he said, "I'm." Do he, and he and then he called his wife and he called his daughter and he sing her, her a song, to a singing song for his daughter. And then he tell the Iraqi off, the Iraqi baby, that to shut up as a baby. See, in Britain, we hear that there are isolated cases. Obviously, there was the brutal torture and killing by British soldiers in Basra and yeah. Baha Musa and so they're isolated. Yeah. But you're saying this film does give us a sense that actually the general treatment of ordinary Iraqis by these big Americans uh, with their military equipment, the Iraqi people didn't really appreciate it very much. I mean, look, the Iraqi people, we had, we were living under dictatorship for 35 years, and then... A dictatorship Britain supported, when Britain supported of course, Saddam Hussein. Of course, we don't, well, I mean, if we go to this story, they support him for, for ages and years during the Iraqi and Iranian war. They support him in, 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 in a lot of ways, you know. They built for him the nuclear weapon, they built all this chemical weapon from where he brought it, not from from Saudi Arabia or from uh, from Syria, he brought from the West. You know, the West was supporting him 100%, and then he turned again, then the story we know we know about it. You know, but but the uh, in 2003 when they came to Iraq, some people, some Iraqi think, oh, they could be a good, a good people, a good army to help, support. But there was not there, you know, we were, we were driving, if you pass the American convoy, and the street of Baghdad. And if you come across 50 meters or 100 meters, you will be shot. And I saw people being shot in front of me because they're just about to pass because maybe they need to go to the hospital or anything like that, you know? So that's the moment in 2003, in June, July 2003, when people turned, they saw them as occupied army they, because they were handled as not really in a respectful way, not showing us any, any, any understanding of things because to be honest with you, it was not any plan. What happened post-war? What, what's going to happen? You know, and that's the chaos, the chaos happened, and the consequence of this chaos, you have Al Qaeda, and you have Daesh, and you have you have all this trouble that we ha we are facing in Iraq because they weren't there before. They, they were not there before, and because and, and to be honest with you, nobody cared about us, honestly. And you were kidnapped by uh, Islamist uh, militia. Yeah, by Al Qaeda. Before the Americans accused you oh, of yeah, being part of yeah, them, yeah, yeah, they accused yeah, yeah. you of being pro-American, yeah, yeah. Um, part of no, the American I, occupation. It was a film inside the film, you know, I was kidnapped by Al Qaeda in 2004, and then uh, with the safe of God and help of God, and I built, by the way, the moment on they the They shot film. your sound, man. Yeah, yeah. And then kidnapped you. Yeah. What was Al Qaeda, being kidnapped by Al Qaeda like? Uh, yeah. They, 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 they don't they don't um, they don't lose time with you a lot. And in 2004, they usually what they do. Anybody they think is disagree with them, or anybody they think they are 
they are pro-American or pro-Iraqi government. They take you one, two hours, and then they shoot you, and they throw you on the tiger and that. And that's what was about to happen with us at the time, because they, they were thinking that we are doing a pro-Iraqi um, pro government film, and you know, and they question us, and that was by the Haifa Street, they call it the Death Street, was controlled by Al-Qaeda. And they were taking us, and four of us, shot the sound, sound man in his legs and injured him, and, and they were about to shoot us. But we were lucky that the police at this time came, they ran away, and we... You literally away. risked your life for independent cinema. Of course. Independent. <laughs> of course. Phil, what does it make you feel, knowing that Hollywood films, it's now emerged, work with the CIA and the Pentagon to make their films, yeah. whereas you were attacked by every side yeah, 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 yeah. being a filmmaker. Yeah, it's like, um, it's important. I think it's important for me as Iraqi, as Muhammad, uh, it's important to have the voice that be not influenced. You know, and uh, you come from a country it could be easy to be influenced from different direction, you know, from the Iraqi government or from another, another, you know, but I try to keep myself as independent because I think like film like The Journey is not easy to be made. You know, I cannot persuade big producer, big company in America or here to make a film like that because I don't think they will see the interest that I see it as, as, as Muhammad, the Iraqi, the Arab, the Muslim, that try to portray our... Um, Even though it's a universal story. Yeah, of course it's I mean, universal story. But I mean, I mean, I mean you, 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 you met these children, you can see them in, the, in London, in New York, in, in, in anywhere in, in this planet. You meet this young man on the film, and you can relate to him when you go and flatten about girls and all of that. This thing story happen, and I, it's my duty that I, I keep this voice free and, 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 and worldwide and not influence, you know, and to keep myself independent. It's difficult, by the way. It's not easy. Like, the film takes you five years of your life, health, you know, just to make it, just to say it. But we have it now on, at the BFI. Many people think you are uh, now giving back to Iraq, uh, even though you, you lived in Holland for so many years. What was Iraq like in the past few weeks when you visited Mosul? It's now one year since uh, we're hearing about this, this atrocities on both sides almost uh, in terms of the liberation from I mean, this, look, new, this new phenomenon ISIS day. Look, when I was shooting uh, the journey in, 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 in Baghdad, Mosul was by the doors of Baghdad. Or circle by Fallujah, Tikrit, you know, very close, you know, and and it was not easy time. And when, um, um, like, um, three weeks before the liberation of Mosul, um, me, my colleague, and my friend, uh, we were thinking, what can we do? Because you know, people talking about people uh, in population in Mosul, they are supporting ISIS. Maybe they are um, part of ISIS, you know. And but we know some of them, and we know they are normal guys has been occupied by ISIS for two, three years, you know. So we felt that we make a, 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 a convoy called Al Eid Fil Mosul to celebrate the Eid in Mosul and we were risking you get that from now ISIS after your previous kidnapping by Al Qaeda. Yeah but, but anyway this yeah is, this is life and this is the the yeah. the, the, the beauty Sorry. and and, and uh, and we ended uh, going with more than 250 artists and culture people from er um, I mean, everywhere in, in, in Iraq with 11 bus, you know, big bus, you know, a convoy to go to Mosul. And we go, the first thing we did, we visit the University of Mosul and we handle more than 20,000 books to the university. We talk about the university is destroyed, the university with the image that you have, it, like the destroying, you know. But the beautiful, the welcome from the people from Mosul, and they were, they were really like warm and happy to see us because for three years no visiting, nobody come to them, you know, and we came from everywhere in Iraq and come to see them, and then we had big event, attended by more than uh, fifteen thousand people, uh, having music, and showing film, and and have a culture event, you know. On the time we did a firework. And one mile from us, crossing the bridge, the uh, American aircraft and the Iraqi army uh, booming ISIS, you know. It was a big event, it was an important event, it was an important